In this second example, we are going to do another block diagram for a control system. The control system in this case is meant to regulate the water level using a float. If you want to control water level in a system, that is our desired input to the system. It's the desired level. This is what we want to control and you want, this is our set point. If you want to control the level, we need to also measure the level. So this is the current. And in any control system, we're going to create a error function. The difference between these two, that here is represented by this sum. And I'll take actions based on the error between the desired and the current level. This error is now given to a controller that for now we can simply represent as a box and let's call that controller. The controller could be a microcontroller, could be a computer or anything that will now through a logic that we have to develop later will relate the error into some sort of control action that will be given to the system. The controller, for instance, to con can determine the opening of a valve that will regulate the water flow. So the output here will be given to a valve to regulate now the opening of that valve, that is the output here, the valve opening. And this is now given to the plant. The plant is the system we are controlling. And this system, I'm going to call here plant, has all the dynamics of the water system. This is the representation of the physical system that we are controlling. The output here is the water level. We're going to measure that with a float. This is our sensor. And the current level now is what we need in this comparator here to determine the error. So here in the output, this is the current water level or real water level. Now notice again that the controller is taking actions not based on the desired level, nor the current level, but on the difference between them. The difference is what determines how much you open or close the valve. To do that, we need the valve, we need the actuator. Here is the actuator, here is the output of the controller. And if the valve, the actuator in this case, is what is going to make the water level change in response to the error here. So now, when the desired level and the current level are the same, the error is zero and the controller will likely close the valve to maintain the same level. And as soon as we see any difference there, that it can be detected through the float, the system resumes and will always correct for any discrepancies between the desired and the current water level.